Good morning. Well, maybe a little disappointment because design uh, is not my forte. But I believe in everything that has been talked about over the last couple of days. And uh, I'm going to give you a discussion about a utility perspective. Um, it's, I'll talk about a couple of things, but I, I want to say absolutely first that I am very appreciative of the entire ETS staff for inviting me uh, and excited because we have begun to work with ETS in a very meaningful way. Uh, my perspective is there's a ton of stuff going on in Austin, and I love Austin. Um, I, I feel like there's a nice, good rivalry between San Antonio and Austin, and I knew it was really, really on because our mayor and, and Austin's mayor had a taco war, and uh, I, I said, well, that's, that's, that's kind of in the spirit of where we are. But I also feel like energy is an amazing place for us to put, come together and talk about the energy corridor. And ETS is really helpful for that. What I did this year is decide that I wanted to bring a slice of this discussion into San Antonio. And I had a Future of Energy uh, Symposium, inaugural event. And, and it was just a slice. We, we went from noon to five, and, and you know, we had a, a reception afterwards. But, but right before the session started, a good friend of mine who runs an advertising firm said, Paula, there's no way that you can talk about energy for more than an hour. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, Mo, actually, there are people in the industry that spend their entire lives contemplating energy and where it is and where it's going to be. And, um, and I, what I'd like to say is, at the end of the discussion for the day, I found a lot of people very enlightened by the complexity and the opportunity of what we have. So we're going to do some more partnering in events, and I'm going to talk about it at the end. But I want to give you a slice of kind of where we are in, in this per perspective. Um, not as flashy. I, I have a lot of jumbled up stuff, and I have some streams of consciousness. But, but I think of in terms of where we are in terms of our past, present, and future. And I'm going to hit from the, these perspectives where we've been, where I think we are today, and of course, where everybody thinks we need to lead to, and that transition and, and, um, and going there. So um, it was funny. I was talking to GE, and they were like, yeah, we've been around for 125 years. And I said, that's awesome. Um, CPS Energy has been around in some form for 157 years. Uh, the 75 is that we've been owned by the community for 75 years. And, um, and so for us, particularly municipal power, kind of a, a slice of the industry, it's important for us to connect to customers, but also our customers are, in fact, our investors directly uh, from day one. And we were bought for $34 million uh, 75 years ago, and we have returned close to $7 billion back to our community since inception. Um, Financially, I'm, I'm always in awe of that. But, but the real point is, when that money is returned, that money goes back to the safety, security, and efficiency of an entire community. And it helps keep the whole ecosystem enabled. And so our perspective of doing that at the same time providing power is very, very meaningful for us. So we're in celebration mode for this year. Our actual anniversary is in October, and we're going to be talking over and over again about that legacy and where we need to go in the future. People. I think I've heard this like, everybody's talking about people, um, and they have different perspectives from that. When I became interim back in 2015, and I became permanent uh, in July this past year, um, all the way through, I knew it was about people. And fascinating, uh, I, I thought, well, you know, I've got I've to anchor our organization from the perspective of looking at it and making it um, simple. And so, you know, people first is our, our absolute approach to the strategy. And quite importantly, all together, we've got to focus on customers. We've got to make sure our employees are transitioning and engaged in that process. And again, it's in essence of us providing service where we actually operate. We're not distant from our customers. We're all connected. 
Um, our chief customer engagement officer calls it sophisticated simplicity. But it's actually funny. I, I ask people, well, what do you think that means? And people actually like think it, it, they get confused by it. But there is no confusion. It's all about the people. It's all about finding those connections where customers really are very satisfied with what you're giving them and making sure that you're thinking constantly about where they're headed and where they want you to go to. Now, I, I'm probably a little bit different because I don't think that people want to spend a tremendous amount of time thinking about their energy solutions. They want it simple. But they are gauging it and thinking about it all the time. And when they do want to think about it, they want to be able to get their hands on it and make those changes immediately. And the reason why I don't think people think about it is I have a 27-year-old and a 21-year-old, and they never t call me about their energy bill. They only call me, my, my older daughter called me at one time. She had a short in her apartment. And that's the only time. I got, I got multiple conversations. But after that, it was never about, hey, mom, I'm going out to dinner, but I'm you know, looking at my energy bill. What do you think about that? So you, we got to put ourselves in perspective here. Um, I often think we got to make it fun. And so I think design is awesome. I'm looking forward to where all that goes. But, but the, the whole point is to make sure that every single aspect of the ecosystem is addressed. Um, to do this, um, I've reconstituted my team, and, and it's funny, I think, I think Felicia is here, she, uh, she's right in the middle there, our chief customer engagement officer. Well, you know what's funny is, we did all kinds of studies about um, this position, and this position is not that recognized in the industry, but this is where we all need to be, and this is where we need to focus. The psychology, again, of connecting to the customers, serving them, not just in the creative sense, but serving them is really the most important thing. And I still liken it to EDS's perspective. It's great for us to think forward, but we are definitely rebuilding our plane while we're flying it. And, and the center of what we do is, is our is our customer focus and really thinking about everyday blocking and tackling while we're thinking about services that they don't currently expect their energy company to come through. So I have an entire approach from, I have a, actually a big um, senior team and, and they're much bigger than this. Underneath here is about almost 25 people that all work together to make this happen. And in correlation to what you heard earlier, I'm changing the dialogue about my expectation around their creativity. And that um, failure is going to happen, but energy companies don't have a lot of space for failure. We've got to do it quick, and we've got to make sure it doesn't happen as, in a sustained way, and we've got to have a great recovery. But we've got to be creative enough to let ourselves do that. But there's a lot of problems in our industry to try to get that mentality. It's much harder to, to get there. For us, we are fully integrated. Um, we actually have generation, transmission, distribution. We, we are connected absolutely to our customers. And so we get the whole view, and we pretty much delve into every aspect of it. We learned a long time ago when we weren't diversified, um, it was in the worst position that we could be in. We actually got um, underwater. Uh, in, in the perspective of dealing with just being a gas company. And so we moved and we figured out diversification is a key. So we did a lot of diversification and we have just about everything, nuclear, gas, coal, transitioning out of some coal units, which is kind of an interesting time to do that right now. Um, wind and, and a lot of solar. But as you see, what we have over there to, the, to my far left is we're just unsure exactly what that absolutely means in the future, but that's okay. Um, our, our biggest thing is to try to get all of the value out of the assets that we have now as we make that transition. But hard to do when you're dealing with assets that can last 30, 40, 50 years. Some cases, some people are talking about 80 year investments, which are great from the standpoint of really getting a lot of value but they don't make the transition so much when people want something very different from what you have. So we're open. We're trying to figure out how to make that happen, how to keep rebuilding as we're flying. But here's some of the real psychological problem. And this is what I found early on in, in be, moving from the CFO role to the CEO role. This is, it's a psychological barrier to creativity in the utility business. Um, it isn't comfortable to fail when you think your whole goal is to solve problems and make things happen. And where I found a big psychological problem was right at the meter. And um, 
and, and that's right, we didn't, we didn't get very creative in the redesign of the meter, but, but at the same time, most people don't even pay attention to their meter. So, um, but it's still a big focal point. What I found as I was talking about solutions, whether it be residential or a, a large um, industrial customer, we were very, very challenged to think about the solutions on the other side. We would say things like, well, we delivered the power, but I don't know what they're doing inside their house or their business. So that's, they need to go talk to their electrician. And, and psychologically, we were just in the wrong space. If anybody knows anything about energy, it should be us. We should be talking to them and their consultants and helping them find the best solutions. So it's, it's a big discussion, but the barriers are still there. And it's, and it's great to say, hey, we're all creative and all of those things, but we have to get deeper than that because we definitely all have to come together for that solution base. I tell folks all the time, CPS Energy is not a technology company. Um, um, maybe one day we'll be, but, but that's not what we're set up for. But we are the nexus of design. We are the place where we do know what's happening in our area. 157 years gives you lots of thought about how we're connected and how everything is set up. So ultimately, we've got to get a lot more comfortable to let the technology come in, let experts come in that spend a lot of time on design. But when the solutions have to be implemented, that's our sweet spot. We just got to go keep going farther down the road to do that. So I mean, this is a pretty simple chart, but I'm going to go through it. Because we're, we're preparing for the day when people are so autonomous they're able to self-generate, and they're not even using any of our distribution, and they're actually broken power between each other. But at the same time, I still don't believe that the average person will spend a tremendous amount of time broken power in and out of their house. It might be a fad, or it might be interesting, or as long as it's easy and there's an app and all that, they might do it. But the average person wants to be able to know that their systems are being managed by an experienced team, and when they want the flexibility to do something interesting, they can. So again, we've got to figure out a way to keep flying that plane and rebuild it and do it in a way where we're OK with less consumption, but we're selling something else. And that's exactly where we are. So um, I, I, I still say that Municipal is kind of a microcosm of the entire industry, but ultimately what we're bringing together is the partnership aspect. We are owned by the city of San Antonio. We don't own Smart City, but we enable Smart City. The thing I have up here is we have our mayor and our city manager, and to me, they own Smart City. But it's the power of the partnership with our owner that's going to make a difference in San Antonio. We're also partnering with the water system and with um, the transport, transportation system. And then once we get that really down and we're really on our way, bringing in private partnership in this process is going to be a lot easier. Um, <clears throat> directly inside of CPS Energy, I'm changing people's paradigms. So my chief of staff, for example, is now um, promoted to be uh, our director of Smart City Outreach. And this is a financial person who is now running the complete conversion and transition inside of our company. So he ran a rate case. He's a really smart guy. And he's sitting inside of our operations units helping us change. The reason why he's awesome in doing this is he can ask those questions five wide deep. Why, 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 why? So we can get at changing who we are and being creative and challenged and, and being intrusive enough to be able to change. We got to do all of that to make sure the partnerships are working. And this is just, just graphic. Everybody has one. It's funny, our owner's uh, graphic looks very similar to this. But, but this is our perspective of what smart city could be. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they said, oh, we shouldn't use smart city. Nobody's got a smart city. Um, and, I, and, and the comment was, you only have smart projects, not a smart city. But you've got to be able to tell people what the vision looks like. Otherwise, there's no incentive for them to go. So we've made ourselves look you know, graphic and think about it. And that is kind of the framework for our creativity. So we will always talk about smart city broadly, just so we have the right vision, direction, and, and perspective of what we have to reach to. Um, the only comment I'll say about this is we still do believe that 
um, energy storage of, of, of all types are very important. I will disagree a little bit. I think if you go after wind and you, you, you incent wind and you incent solar, um, I don't know what the difference is uh, in, in not incenting energy storage to help you get to these solutions. I, I don't think that's exactly what the comment was earlier, but, but I think there are some, some things in the energy storage space that we've got to kind of lean into and incent. It just needs to be controlled, but we better be in the space not to be left behind. So we have a big project that we're actually partnering with Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio, and we're excited about our ability to use energy storage in the future. And ultimately, we do also agree that the internet will turn into the internet for energy, and smart city, although it's hard to contemplate, can actually be smart state if we do it right. So I'm, I'm gonna wrap up here. Um, it's interesting. Um, I think this is kind of the, the, the new competition. So there's the duck curve and the, and the armadillo curve and the, the, the cat curve. I, San Antonio, I got, you know, it's like the, the coyote curve or something like that. But uh, I got, we got to go back and be creative and design on that perspective. But the whole point is the talks are important and the conversations are important. So once again, I have to say thanks to ETS and everything to, to bring everyone together. What I'm showing you here is I'm bringing in other people. I'm bringing in Keystone, which is a policy group and an energy group. And I serve in that board and, and I have a uh, board member here with me, Jan, and, and we are on there talking about energy at all different levels, not just the people who are making that change, but everything around it. Um, we are working in Epicenter. Kimberly uh, Britton is here, and we're running a new new program. We, are, we have a decommissioned plant, and um, she's going to take that and make that a, a thought center, and that will let us do the corridor between San Antonio and, and Austin. We are running our own technology concept uh, to, uh, competition next month, uh, right around the corner to get that going. And, and the whole point is partnership and thought leadership. And I thank you all for being here for that. Please look for um, conversations on my LinkedIn page for more information and on our CPS Energy page. We definitely want to keep that conversation going in South Texas. Very important. Thank you for your time today. <laughs>